All right, guys, so today I'm going to show you how to ch root using Arch Linux. Now, in Arch Linux, you use a command called arch dash ch root. Um, and uh, generally, you're, you're gonna, this is, you're going to need to do a few more things rather than just run the command. Um, but first of all, to get this command, and it's, this basically the, the arch ch root command basically calls the regular ch root command. But in any case, um, you're going to need to install pacman dash s um, arch install scripts. So we're basically installing the arch install scripts package. Um, now I've already installed this, but um, this is basically what you would do. You say, do you want to install this? Say yes, and there you go. All right, so anyways, you'll need to do that and make, to make sure that it's on your system. So we just reinstalled it there, but if you didn't have it, that's what you would do. So now we can run arch and make sure you're root or using sudo. So, so I'm logged in as root right now. So you could say arch dash ch root mnt. Now this is gonna give you an error telling you that there's no proc file system and a bunch of other things. So you, you're gonna need to have um, certain things here for this to actually work like you, you're re actually meant to mount a, a working system this would be useful if you had mounted up off of like a you know bootable usb driver a bootable uh, cd or something and you wanted to mount your existing file system like you boot it into an environment but then you want to mount an existing system that's installed on your hard drives or something you, you would generally you would mount those and then ch root to them or say for example if i pulled the hard drives out of some other system place them in this system and I want to ch root to the I want to mount those drives and ch root to them to actually be able to work as if I were in those systems. So any case, that's generally what you're going to use ch root for. Um, generally, uh, let, let's see if we can actually do this today. So you, you might identify devices like this, lsblk, and now here we can see I only have one actual um, one actual hard drive on the system, SDA, and it has two partitions, swap and the root partition. So let's see, we would generally want to, so if we had, let's pretend we had another system, like say SDB, like currently where we are running on SDA right now. So right now we, we have SDA2 mounted as root and we're in there now. So that's already our root system. But say if we had another system, like another hard drive, installed like SDB or something, we could mount that and ch root to that instead. Now, um, I don't have another disk, but I still want to show you how you would do this. So I'm going to mount my SDA2 over the MNT directory just to show you how you might do this. So I'm going to mount dev SDA2 over the MNT directory. So mount, mount it there. Now, if you were to look in the root directory, you see some files here. It looks like an installed system on here. So run ls, whoops, ls on your MNT directory, and it now also has those same files. So I've mount, mounted SDA on root and on MNT. Now, uh, let's let's just pretend that instead of uh, running mounting SDA2 on MNT, I mounted something like SDB or SDC or whatever else on MNT. Um, so, so we'll pretend that that's the case, even though it's not. This is, other than that, all these commands will work exactly the same, just about. Um, so, let's see. Let's try, let's try um, ch rooting to it now. It's probably not going to work still, because there are a few more things that we really should do. So, um, okay, how about that? It worked. All right, so we've ch rooted to here. We're in the root directory and we see all of this stuff. So there we go, everything should work just as it already did work. All right, now we can exit out of here. Now, a few things you might wanna do, you might wanna bind like the dev file system, the sys file system and the proc file system. So actually let's let's try this again. Let's mount, let's, um, let's ch root to mnt and let's see what's under proc. Proc is, all right, how about that? It included proc as well. So it looks like that's everything you need. I'm, I'm gonna drag my window with my uh, guide over onto this monitor right now. Now, just so I can talk through some of these things. So 
Um, we, we have a few commands you might run to mount dev and sys or proc. Apparently we don't need those in this case. Um, but it, it has been recommended to, to actually do that. So there you go. That we have successfully ch rooted. This may not be the best example. A better example would probably be if I were to actually create another hard drive with another installed system. But um, this basically shows you what you need to do to actually ch root. We've successfully ch rooted into there. So um, I, I guess we've kind of achieved the goal that we want, but um, we, we could probably do more with it. And I'm sure we will end up using this command to do more things. I mean, we do use the ch root command in the install video. So if you take a look at our Arch Linux install video, you do need to use ch root for that. Um, so there, there are so there are a few use cases. We're probably gonna eventually have future videos where we show you how to like reset your password and stuff. But um, here, let's go over some of the reasons why you might do this. So, all right, reasons you might want to use chroot. You may have forgotten your password and you need to reset it. Um, you may want to build packages in a clean environment. Um, you you may need to upgrade or downgrade packages, reinstall the bootloader on your system or you might find yourself rebuilding the init RAM FS image. So just, just different reasons why you might end up doing that. So it's, it's a useful thing to be familiar with. And we very well may show you examples of how to do those things in future videos. But other than that, we have a lot of other Arch Linux videos out and we're coming out with more really soon. And we have a ton of other great tech content out there also. So hopefully you found this useful or at least interesting if nothing else. You might want to give me a thumbs up. Um, you might want to hit that subscribe button also and uh, hit the little bell icon. Up. Otherwise, uh, YouTube's probably not going to let you know when we come out with a new video. Um, we do have a lot of great stuff coming up. And, and we've actually, if you want to check our list of videos, we've already put out a lot of uh, pretty interesting things, some more interesting than others. Um, we cover a lot of great stuff um, coding, servers, hardware, software. 3D printing, electronics, uh, single board computers, robots, networking, all sorts of great tech related stuff that you're not going to want to miss. So if you, if you want your YouTube feed to uh, you know, be that much more interesting, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button. But more important than any of that stuff, you're going to want to leave a comment down below, especially if you know something that I don't know. Um, definitely let me know, not just for me, but for the next person who comes along and watches this video and reads the comments. Um, leave a comment for them also. Any, any comments, questions, criticisms, whatever you want to say, I probably want to hear it. So do leave a comment down below. And uh, that's pretty much it for today. So as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.